the Fukushima crisis has everyone forgot this? We must demand that every single nation's leader make an urgent statement and a clear assessment and on the Fukushima crisis. Why this is important, the Pacific Ocean's plant and animal life is dying. The ocean is dying, by all accounts, and if so, the food supply along with it. The causes are numerous, and overlapping and massive numbers of wild animal populations are dying as a result of it. The amount of radioactivity within the rods themselves, now in the elevated pool in Tower 4 is about 14 apostrophe 000 times the amount of the Hiroshima bomb. We're dealing with diabolical energy. Fukushima is a ticking time bomb that could destroy life in the entire northern hemisphere for thousands of years, according to many experts. The versions of the facts of the mainstream media about the containment of the problem and the reassurances by TEPCO, who has repeatedly failed to provide solutions, can't and won't be trusted. Japan's former Prime Minister Jinichiro Koizumi has labeled the country's current leader, Shinzo Abe, a liar for telling the international community that the situation at the wrecked Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant is under control. The world is kept in the dark about the reality around the Fukushima disaster, especially the situation around the elevated pool in building number 4. The single most articulate and passionate advocate of citizen action to remedy the nuclear and environmental and nuclear crises, Dr. Helen Caldicott has devoted the last 26 years to an international campaign to educate the public about the medical hazards of the nuclear age and the necessary changes in human behavior to stop environmental destruction. Dr. Caldicott's views are reflected by David Suzuki with similar words and stern warning. The fuel rods need to be removed because if there's another earthquake the building will go down and all those fuel rods would be exposed to the air and they will burn. They will release ten times more radiation cesium than it was released at Chernobyl and pollute much of Japan and the Northern Hemisphere. If there is another earthquake and building 4 collapses which contains the cooling pool with fresh fuel the area around Fukushima would have to be evacuated, meaning that the continuing operation of cooling down of building number 5 and number 3 would stop, leading to a crisis of global scale and a threat for life on Earth for thousands of years. Japan's former Prime Minister Jinichiro Koizumi has labeled the country's current leader, Shinzo Abe, a liar for telling the international community that the situation at the wrecked Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant is under control. IOC officials were concerned by reports about the huge buildup of contaminated water at the Fukushima site, more than two years after the disaster forced the evacuation of tens of thousands of residents. When, Abe, said the situation was under control, he was lying, Koizumi told reporters in Tokyo. It is not under control, he added, noting the problems the plant's operator, Tokyo Electric Power, TEPCO, has experienced with a costly subterranean ice wall that is supposed to prevent groundwater from flowing into the basements of the damaged reactors, where it becomes highly contaminated. They keep saying they can do it, but they can't, Koizumi said. He went on to claim that Abe had been fooled by industry experts who claim that nuclear is the safest, cleanest and cheapest form of energy for resource-poor Japan. He believes what he's being told by nuclear experts, Koizumi said. I believed them, too, when I was Prime Minister. I think Abe understands the arguments on both sides of the debate, but he has chosen to believe the pro-nuclear lobby. After the Fukushima crisis, Koizumi said he had studied the process, reality and history of the introduction of nuclear power, and became ashamed of myself for believing such lies. Koizumi, 74, has also thrown his support behind hundreds of U.S. sailors and Marines who claim they developed leukemia and other serious health problems after being exposed to Fukushima radiation plumes while helping with relief operations, nicknamed Operation Tomodaki, friend following the 11th of March 2011 earthquake and tsunami. In 2012 the service personnel launched a lawsuit accusing TEPCO of failing to prevent the accident and of lying about the levels of radiation from the stricken reactors, putting U.S. personnel at risk.
Most of the 400 plaintiffs were aboard the USS Ronald Reagan, a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier that was anchored off Japan's northeast coast while helicopters flew emergency supplies to survivors of the tsunami, which killed almost 19,000 people. Medical experts, however, said the sailors would have received only small, non-harmful doses of radiation. A U.S. Defense Department report published in 2014 said no link had been established between the sailors' health problems and their exposure to low doses of Fukushima radiation, which everyone knows is a blatant lie. Koizumi, who met several of the six servicemen in San Diego in May, plans to raise $1 million by the end of next March to help cover the sailors' medical expenses. I felt I had to do something to help those who worked so hard for Japan, he said. That won't be enough money, but at least it will show that Japan is grateful for what they did for us. The ocean is dying, by all accounts, and if so, the food supply along with it. The causes are numerous, and overlapping. And massive numbers of wild animal populations are dying as a result of it. Natural causes in the environment are partly to blame, so too are the corporations of man. The effects of Fukushima, unleashing untold levels of radiation into the ocean and onto Pacific shores, the cumulative effect of modern chemicals and agricultural waste tainting the water and disrupting reproduction. A startling new report says in no uncertain terms that the Pacific Ocean off the California coast is turning into a desert. Once full of life, it is now becoming barren, and marine mammals, seabirds and fish are starving as a result. According to Ocean Health, the waters of the Pacific off the coast of California are a clear, shimmering blue today, so transparent it's possible to see the sandy bottom below. Clear water is a sign that the ocean is turning into a desert, and the chain reaction that causes that bitter clarity is perhaps most obvious on the beaches of the Golden State, where thousands of emaciated sea lion pups are stranded. Over the last three years, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration NOAA, has noticed a growing number of strandings on the beaches of California and up into the Pacific Northwest. In 2013, 1,171 sea lions were stranded, and 2,700 have already stranded in 2015, a sign that something is seriously wrong, as pups don't normally wind up on their own until later in the spring and early summer. An unusually large number of sea lions stranding in 2013 was a red flag. There was a food availability problem even before the ocean got warm. Johnson this has never happened before. It's incredible. It's so unusual, and there's no really good explanation for it. There's also a good chance that the problem will continue, said a NOAA research scientist in climatology, Nate Mantua. Experts blame a lack of food due to unusually warm ocean waters. NOAA declared an El Nino, the weather pattern that warms the Pacific, a few weeks ago. The water is three and a half to six degrees warmer than the average, according to Mantua, because of a lack of north wind on the west coast. Ordinarily, the north wind drives the current, creating upwelling that brings forth the nutrients that feed the sardines, anchovies and other fish that adult sea lions feed on. The warm water is likely pushing prime sea lion foods, market squid, sardines and anchovies, further north forcing the mothers to abandon their pups for up to eight days at a time in search of sustenance. The pups, scientists believe, are weaning themselves early out of desperation and setting out on their own despite being underweight and ill-prepared to hunt. These animals are coming in really desperate. They're at the end of life. They're in a crisis, and not all animals are going to make it, said Keith A. Matassa. Executive Director at the Pacific Marine Mammal Center, which is currently rehabilitating 115 sea lion pups. The same is true of seabirds on the Washington state coast. In the storm debris littering a Washington state shoreline, Bonnie Woods saw something grisly, the mangled bodies of dozens of scraggly young seabirds. Walking half a mile along the beach at Twin Harbors State Park on Wednesday, Woods spotted more than 130 carcasses of juvenile cassins orchlids, the blue-footed, 
palm-sized victims of what is becoming one of the largest mass die-offs of seabirds ever recorded. It was so distressing, recalled Wood, a volunteer who patrols Pacific Northwest beaches looking for dead or stranded birds. They were just everywhere. Every ten yards we'd find another ten bodies of these sweet little things. This is just massive, massive, unprecedented, said Rejulia Parrish, a University of Washington seabird ecologist who oversees the Coastal Observation and Seabird Survey Team, COAST, a program that has tracked West Coast seabird deaths for almost 20 years. We may be talking about 50,000 to 100,000 deaths. So far, 100,000 doesn't necessarily sound large, statistically speaking, but precedent in the history of recorded animal deaths suggests that it is, in fact massive. Even National Geographic is noting that these die-off events are unprecedented. Warmer water is indicated for much of the starvation faced by many of the dead animals. Last year, scientists sounded the alarm over the death of millions of starfish blamed on warmer waters and mystery virus. Starfish are dying by the millions up and down the west coast, leading scientists to warn of the possibility of localized extinction of some species. As the disease spreads, researchers may be zeroing in on a link between warming waters and the rising starfish body count. We must, as citizens of this earth, demand an immediate international cooperative plan and an official statement by each world leader on what his, her own nation's assessment on the Fukushima disaster is, and an official detailed presentation by national scientists on their suggested plan of action to solve the biggest threat the Earth ever faced. We also demand the creation of an online website where the public can ask questions related to the crisis with a panel of experts, selected by the public, able to address the concerns without sugar coating. We must demand an immediate statement by all world leaders, an open debate and a press release on the plan of action in the immediate future. What can you do? Write or talk to your state senators and representatives, get the subject of Fukushima out in the open and up front, especially all of the people that live in California. Do you know that radiation is on the shores of all your ocean beaches? There are many YouTube videos showing radiation meters recording toxic radiation levels right on the beach. And other YouTube videos that show radiation in fruits and veggies from California. The Pacific Ocean is dying, all plant and animal life is extinguishing. I made this video to bring this disaster to the forefront, what will you do? Start with sharing this video on Facebook, Reddit, Google Plus and wherever you surf. We need to do something.